I am Professor T.C. Vengadi Surlu, Department of Biotechnology, Vignans Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. So today's lecture topic is production of ethanol. See here, your production process is get begins with milling because the grain is rich with complex uh, carbohydrates is first subjected for crushing process. Milling is basically a crushing process. Later, the fine powder is sent to a pre-treatment tank so where you can use the acid and stream treatment, combination treatment you are going to give for separating the cellulose from the matrix polymer. So we can see here the dark lines, they are lignin. So you can separate the cellulose from lignin and hemicellulose so that your cellulose now is ready for enzyme hydrolysis. Then from the liquid air, you can pump from the pre-treatment tank into the hydrolysis unit. So in the hydrolysis unit, your endogluconase enzyme, it makes a cleavage and forms a short cellulose chain. This short cellulose chain, it contains you know, a monomeric units of glucose. So later, by the exogluconase enzyme, it makes a cleavage at the end of the chain and forms the cellobiose fragments. Cellobiose is a disaccharide, contains two monomeric glucose units. So two monomeric glucose are formed by the action of glucosidase enzyme. So now you are a liquid, you can pump from the hydrolysis tank into your fermenter. So where you can add the inoculum, that is the yeast, and you can provide the nutrients and antiform agents for running of the fermentation process. So during the fermentation process, the yeast cells can release the enzymes, which catalyzes this reaction. They can convert the one mole of glucose into two moles of ethanol and it also produces two moles of CO2. So once fermentation is completed, your product is ready. The ethanol can be recovered by using the unit operation that is the distillation process. Then the ethanol, recovered ethanol, you can store here. So with this, you can see the contents in today's talk. See the introduction, properties of ethanol, raw materials required for production of ethanol, microorganisms and steps in ethanol making process, the biochemistry of the ethanol production. So what are byproducts produced by fermentation process, summary followed by references. So you can see here the ethanol is a volatile, flammable, clear and colorless liquid. So ethanol is a good solvent. So it is used as germicide, beverage, antifreeze agent and used as depressant and also it can used as the chemical intermediate for making of many synthetics. So this ethanol can be produced primarily by applying a fermentation process. So where the enzyme so readily ferment the carbohydrates into the alcohol. So you can see here the properties of the ethanol has molecular formula C2H5 OH, the molecular weight 46.07 and it has density 0 0.791 at 20 degrees. So for producing the ethanol, we can use the different raw materials. So we can see here the first one is the beet, you can use the maize and you can use sugar beet and sugar cane as raw materials for producing ethanol. So another raw material, the molasses, is a liquid. Usually it can be obtained from the sugar industries. It is a preferred raw material for production of ethanol. So this molasses is basically a viscous material. It is rich with the carbohydrates. It contains the sucrose, fructose and glucose in concentration range 50 to 60 percent. So the microorganisms used in ethanol fermentation process both you can uh, use bacteria and yeast. So from the bacteria, you can prefer the Gymomonas mobilis is the preferred bacteria for production of ethanol. And from yeast side, you can use the Candida species and you can use Saccharomyces. These two are a top preferred yeast species for production of ethanol. So the steps in ethanol production I told the production process is get begins with milling, followed by liquefaction, saccharification, 
fermentation, distillation, and last step is dehydration. So you can see the first step. The first one is the milling process. So for ethanol production, so that we can uh, collect the primary raw material is the different grains which are rich with carbohydrate. So this uh, rich carbohydrate uh, material that are the food grains, they are first subjected to the milling. Milling basically it is a crushing process. So where the feedstock using as a raw material that can pass through a hammer mill for making a fine powder, we can call it as meal. So you can observe the same, the milling process in the figure here, the milling step in ethanol production, where the grain selected as raw materials for production of ethanol can pass through the hammer mill for making of the fine powder. And second one is the liquefaction, where the meal is mixed with water and engines. So we can add the mileage engine and we can apply the heat also. This liquefaction uh, stage, it requires apply of heat. And this and high temperature, it also reduces the bacterial level in the mass. So we can observe the liquefaction stage in a vessel, we can add the water and the mileage and we can boil it. So by the boiling process, by applying the heat, so more the engines can make the hydrolysis. So it follows the saccharification. So in the saccharification stage, we are going to add glucomylase for a, a cool mass liquid. So this enzyme which converts the uh, liquefied starch into a fermentable sugars. The next stage is the fermentation. The fermentation is the most crucial stage for producing the ethanol. So then the classical fermentation process for producing the ethanol, so you can use the three phases. So the phase one, where the first yeast cells can aerobically grow it. So where the yeast cells can consume the oxygen, so present in the mass. So in the second stage, we can observe the alcohol production. So with the post saccharification of the sugars. And the last stage, final stage, where you can see the uh, decrease in alcohol formation along with the insignificant yeast growth so you can see here the fermentation basically it is a chemical change so brought by the action of enzymes so secreted by the yeast cells so our yeast cell can release invertase and gymage enzymes which are very much essential for converting a simple sugars into a alcohol so the ethanol fermentation process is an anaerobic process and during the fermentation process the heat liberated so which is removed by the cooling coils. The overall time for completion of fermentation process is 30 to 70 hours. So we have to maintain the temperature for fermentation process 20 to 30 degrees and pH you need to maintain 4.5. So the pH control usually you can done by using HCl. By fermentation process you can produce 8 to 10 percent of uh, alcohol. So you can observe in your figure here the yeast fermentation process for production of uh, alcohol. So in a large tank, so you can add, you can fill up with the fermentation medium and add the yeast cells so that your yeast cells can make alcohol. You can see in the image one side we are adding yeast, other side at the end from the reactor will get the alcohol. So there is a typical biochemistry of the ethanol production process. So we are adding uh, no, a complex raw materials as the primary source. So now this complex uh, carbohydrates, they are hydrolyzed by enzymes and will get a simple glucose. So this glucose undergoes into a, a series of reactions by the glycolysis and will get a two molecules of uh, pyruvic acid. Then you can see here the pyruvic acid by the decarboxylation reaction, it forms the acetaldehyde. At the end from acetaldehyde, now it is converted to the ethanol by the action of enzyme that is alcohol dehydrogenase. So then once the fermentation is completed, then your ethanol is ready. 
in a react so this can be recovered by using a unit operation that is a distillation process a distillation basically it is a thermal separation method so it can be used for separation of the liquid mixtures so your distillation process it utilizes the different volatility of the components of the mixture to be separated so for ethanol recovery so you can use a multi column distillation system where the alcohol is separated from solid and water so you can see here the alcohol it can leaves the top of the column the distillation unit so from the base side of the column we will get the residual mass that you can call it as stillase so you can observe in a typical view of the multi stage multi column distillation unit so we can pass the uh, product containing solution into a distillation unit so from that we will get the end product is alcohol so you can see here how the distillation process will works so in a distillation column so we can uh, fit the solution see the liquid uh, mixture to be separated so that can fed into a distillation column and can apply the heat that's what it is a thermal separation process so during the heating process what happened where so it brought into a different boiling points and the vapor it is moved to the top side of the column and the top side of the column where the vapor is exist and it is subjected to the condensation so the part of the condensate is carried away as top product and the remaining remainder condensate it's flows back into a column in the distillation column that we can see in the diagram here there is flow of this uh, reflux condensate it runs towards the down downside so for ethanol recovery we can use the azeotropic distillation process so azeotropic distillation is it uses you know a third component to separate two close boiling components for example if you see in the ethanol recovery process where you can add the benzene as a geotropic agent for separation of ethanol and water so now the third compound what we have added that increases the differences in the boiling points so which facilitates the separation by the distillation process so then second one is, is the rectifying column so in the rectifying column the azeotropic alcohol water mixture of 95% ethanol is withdrawn as side product so we can see here the 95% of ethanol is condensed in the condenser and stored in a storage tank so here alcohol water mixture are rectified to increase the strength of alcohol and last stage is the dehydration stage so it can be done where you can remove you no know, a water so the product formed the alcohol product formed at this stage is called as anhydrous alcohol so you can see there is a typical view of uh, dehydration unit with this we can uh, get the more percent recovery of the ethanol we can achieve and during the once we complete the distillation stage i told from the bottom of the column we will get a, a by product that is a residual grain mass you can call as stillase so now you can observe see in the image so whatever the mass coming from out from the distillation unit so it is subjected to the evaporation so that the excess water is separated from the solid part in the mass so this solid part we can call it as stillase then the stillase is subjected to the drying and followed by the pelleting process so you can make the pellets of this residual grains this pellets we can call it as distillers dried grains with soluble so this ddgs you can use it as animal feed so and, uh, and you also get another by product that is the carbon dioxide so this you can use to carbonate the beverages and co2 you can also use in manufacturing of dries and also used to flash freeze the meat so you can go for summary steps in making of the ethanol process the process requires the primary raw material that is the grains these grains are rich with carbohydrates they are subjected to the milling process first by milling 
we can make a finite powder so it is followed by the saccharification process where you can apply the heat and we can also add water and enzymes so this enzymes can hydrolyze and convert the complex carbohydrates into a simple sugars now the simple sugars during the fermentation stage by the yeast cells so they can convert it to alcohol so the released alcohol you can observe here it can be recovered by using a, a multi stage a distillation unit that is you can run the distillation and the rectification unit so with that we will uh, get to know the final product is subjected to the dehydration where we can get the more percent recovery of the ethanol so from the bottom side of the distillation column we will get a residual mass that is subjected to the evaporation so that we can remove the water whatever the residual grain dried grain will get by a drying process that we can call it as the stillage is subjected to the pelleting process for making a pellets this we can call it as ddgs this ddgs is the by product from ethanol process which can be used as the animal feed so you can see here another summary uh, flow sheet for production of ethanol so ethanol you can also make by using the corn as raw material you can see here the corn stover also you can use as the raw material it is subjected to milling saccharification followed by fermentation and for recovery of ethanol you can use the distillation the final product ethanol it can use for end user applications in image you can see the ethanol is used for for transportation used as a fuel so these are all references needs to follow for production of ethanol this is the view of ethanol production plant thank you thank you all